All right, welcome everybody. We still have, it looks like a few people joining us. Uh -huh, so let's go. All right, so um, feel free at any time to unmute yourself uh, if you need to ask a question. This is an informal class. I really don't mind being interrupted at all. If you're not comfortable with unmuting yourself, you can always use the chat button. And that's gonna be um, in the center down at the bottom of the Zoom window. So if you click on the little chat, it should pop up to the right of your screen. Uh, and then you can, uh, or I'm sorry, right? <laughs> uh, and you can type in there and then I'll see it. Um, but if, if not at any time, uh, if you don't have a question, just keep your, um, your sound off. That way there aren't any disruptions. Um, so how I'm gonna do tonight, if you weren't here for the last pore painting class, uh, make sure you set everything up with either a tarp or a newspaper, uh, garbage bag works or a sh old shower curtain. That way you're protecting your furniture and make sure you're wearing clothing that you don't mind getting any paint on. Just want to protect uh, your house, your floor, wherever you're painting, and then also your clothing because we don't want anything to get ruined. Uh, if you do have an apron that you don't mind getting paint on, wear that. Um, so just make sure you set up everything. I'm going to talk a little bit about pour painting. Then we're going to mix uh, the paint and then we'll do the actual pour painting. Uh, that part doesn't really take that long. So I'll be doing some talking first um, and then we'll do the painting. So you're welcome to wait until I get to the mixing part or if you want to, you can go ahead and start mixing the medium and the paint together. Uh, those six little cups that I gave you, you wanna use those, keep the colors separate. So one color goes in one cup, then you add um, about a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to medium, or you can do a one-to-two ratio. I know we're a little limited on uh, the pour medium, so it might be best if you do a one-to-one -one if you plan on using all six colors. But if you decide not to use all six colors, then you can do a two-to-one ratio, and that might work better. Um, the more medium you have, the better it'll flow. All right, so um, we may get some late uh, people joining us, and so you may see me pause for a second to admit them. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, and if you have the PowerPoint, you can use that for notes if you like to. Uh, it's up to you. So now I'm going to, oh, this, was there a question? All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, I think it was this one. Uh, can you share? It's this one. Okay, mm, let's see. All right, so, um, if you picked up a kit, please be sure to unpack it. Um, I strongly recommend setting it up with something protecting your house, your floor, your furniture. It's difficult to remove acrylic paint once it dries. <clears throat> Um, all right. Also, uh, we're just learning today, so please don't put any pressure on yourself or high expectations that you'll create something perfect. Uh, I'm here to tell you that rarely happens. <laughs> uh, and more often, artists have to fail before they get the kind of result uh, they were hoping to achieve. So it's normal and common to do something multiple times before you get something that you're really uh, satisfied and proud of. But this is uh, what we're going to be going over. So what's paint pouring? Why, sh why do we want to do it? Why do you need a medium, the materials uh, required, and you know some fun ones to try at a later date. And then we'll pour. All right, so 
What is acrylic pour painting? It's a painting technique where acrylic paint is mixed with some type of pouring medium and then it's poured onto a painting ground or surface in a variety of ways. So there are multiple techniques and you can actually move, use more than one technique in a paint pour. Uh, sometimes colors are poured directly from an individual cup onto the painting ground or surface. And other times multiple colors are combined into one cup and then poured together and that's called a dirty pour. Uh, we did in the last class, we did a flip cup and that was also a dirty pour. Um, and we'll be doing a dirty pour uh, tonight too. All right, so why do you pour painting? Well, it's fun. You don't need to have any kind of drawing or painting skills. Uh, it looks really fluid, it's super abstract, so you can't really mess it up. Uh, you can get a variety of effects. Uh, you can do experimentation. If you have a hairdryer or a butane torch that you don't mind getting any paint on and basically ruining for anything else, <laughs> you can use that to get these cool cells in the painting. Um, and the reason why we use a pouring medium is because it helps keep the color separate and then it helps the paint uh, fluid flow from the cup onto the painting surface or painting ground. Uh, it keeps the colors uh, from becoming muddy and unattractive. And then it also helps preserve the paint so that when it dries, it doesn't crack. So these are the supplies that you do need. Um, and this is all in the PowerPoint that I included in your kit. But if you did not pick up a kit, uh, you can always send me an email and I'll include it in the chat and I'll send this PowerPoint to you if you'd like for future reference. Um, but, but for supplies um, in the kit, you got a, uh, I believe eight by 10 inch canvas. But you can also use a um, canvas panel board. Um, you need acrylic paints and it can have a variety. You don't have to use uh, multiple paints. You can just use a couple colors if you want, uh, just depending on what you'd like to do, a pouring medium of your choice. This is the medium that we are using tonight. It's the Apple Barrel. Um, they do have 16 ounce uh, bottles. Also, I got this from Walmart in the craft section. Uh, you need craft sticks or something that you really don't care about ruining for mixing the paint and medium together. Uh, some kind of container to mix the paint medium in. Uh, we're using plastic cups. You, this is not necessary, but you could have a heat gun or a butane torch or a hair dryer. Uh, but with this is the caveat that it's going to be ruined for anything else because you will get paint on it if you use um, anything to heat the paint up. Some kind of protective uh, mat, tarp, um, dollar store, shower curtain to protect your workspace or painting space. A pan or a container in, to put it in. So some artists use a tray that has the sides on it to protect the paint that you're pouring in that falls off the canvas. It just stays in the little uh, pan. I'm using a box. So luckily I work at a library and we get a lot of boxes. <laughs> um, and then you want a prop. So I included additional cups in your kit. What you wanna do is I'm gonna move my camera real, real quick so you can see my setup. So I'm sorry if um, the motion gets a little uh, hard to follow, but um, I want to show you, I'm, I have these cups upside down in my box so it can hold the canvas. So um, that way it's up off the garbage bag and then the paint won't dry the canvas onto the bag. Um, gloves if you want to, I forgot to wear them last time so I got paint on my hands. Uh, a silicone spray, uh, you can do some really cool effects with a silicone spray, some, um, but it's, it's optional. A colander or a funnel, uh, you'll see in the image there, they're doing like a flower pour painting with a colander and it looks really cool. So um, the image next to that is like they move the colander a little bit so they got a, a different effect with the pour. 
Uh, and these are just options for painting surfaces. You, you don't necessarily have to use a canvas. You can use wood, you can use found objects. It can be a household object, it doesn't matter. All right, so um, the, this is just uh, like a survey. Oh, I have some people in the waiting room. Okay. A uh, survey of what's available, it's not comprehensive, it's just a short list. Um, I, we're using the Apple Barrel pouring medium again. I got this from Walmart. You can probably get it from Meyer or Joanne's or Michael's if they um, sell it too. You might want to just give them a call before you make the trip. And each of these um, pouring mediums, they'll help keep your paint color separate and prevent cracking after, after you've poured the paint. So here's just a little bit of vocabulary that you encounter when you're doing pour painting. Uh, it's a little bit different from regular acrylic painting. So the painting ground is the surface that you're pouring the paint onto, so it's your canvas. <clears throat> the cells are what happens. So you see in this flower here, the little, um, the, the, like the breaking up of the paint. They heated the paint here and that's how they got those really cool like watery looking cells. The dirty pour, like I said before, is all colors are added to a cup or container at the same time and then they're poured from the same cup. So we did the flip cup last time. We're doing the tree rings tonight. Um, so I'll be telling you what the tree rings is. Essentially, it's uh, the technique of pour where you pour really slowly in a tight, tiny circle, very slowly, and it looks like a tree cut. So you see the tree rings in the um, in the bark. So it's bands of colors circling each other. Um, and then a Dutch pour is a technique that uses air to manipulate the paints on the ground. So that's where you use a hair dryer or um, a straw to blow into to move the painting around. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate that you want to make sure you have everything set up before you paint. Um, not only because uh, you don't want to be grabbing stuff during the process of doing the pour because that kind of takes away from the fun of it. Uh, so if you have everything set up beforehand, then you can just go ahead and do um, the painting without any interruptions. But you also want to ensure proper protection for yourself and for your home. All right, so for mixing, you want to use, um, like I said in the beginning, a one to one or one to two paint to medium ratio. So you always want to have, it wants, you want it to be like um, a mixture that is kind of like butter. So it, and then it flows off in, out of the cup when you move it. So acrylic paint without the medium is not going to, you can't pour that directly out of a cup. It doesn't have any kind of flow, it's too solid. So you want to use a, a container that you don't mind ruining with the acrylic paint medium and you want to mix each color separately. So each, uh, each color gets its own cup and its own medium. So, uh, oh, consistency should be like liquid honey. So it should, it should be kind of like a little sticky, but enough to where it can flow out of the cup. And then you want to make sure once you've mixed them to leave them to stand for a little bit to get the bubbles out of it, unless you don't mind if it has that um, effect in it once you pour the paint. So he, here are some of the techniques that uh, artists use when they're doing pour painting and there are a lot out there. Um, this certainly isn't everything. So um, you can pour all the colors at once um, and effectively dump it onto your painting ground like flip cup or um, or the tree ring. There is also the bottle bottom puddle pour. Say that five times fast. <laughs> so what you do is you take a 16 ounce uh, bottle of your whatever soda that you were drinking, you cut the bottom part off where the, where the bubble bottom part is, you flip that around so the bottom is facing up and then you pour it directly in it and it should create like a like a flower effect on your painting ground. Um, there's also the wing pour. So you actually pour um, the paint out 
at an angle. So it would be like this and the uh, paint would just go down the canvas at an angle. Um, Dutch pour is using air. With the string, you would either put the string in the paint and then go to the canvas, or you would just use the string directly on the canvas with the paint already in it. Some people like to use those metal bulb uh, strings. You can use a colander, which is not listed here, or you can do a multi-canvas pour. So you have it set up where there's a canvas here, a canvas here, and then the paint drips from one canvas onto the next. So it's pretty cool. Um, the swipe is a kind of pour painting technique where each color um, is poured at a time on the canvas in horizontal lines. And then use like a paper towel to uh, mix them together. It's really interesting. I'd re I recommend um, going to YouTube and looking at a video of that because it's really interesting. All right, so we're finally at the moment you are all waiting for. <clears throat> we're gonna do the pour painting. So I'm going to move my camera. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. Let's just make sure I don't have anybody in the waiting room. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to move my camera. So there's going to be a little bit of motion here. Okay. So here um, I have my box set up with the garbage bag here. I have the four cups flipped upside down for the canvas to rest on. And then I already pre-mixed four of my colors, but um, if you waited until now, I'm going to mix, um, I'm going to mix yellow and I may do green. I don't have the same cups as you guys because I ran out of them, so I had to use whatever was in the library. So I'm just gonna put the, I'm, I'm doing the yellow. Um, I'm pouring that out of the little container that I had it in, into my mixing cup. So I was trying to get as much of the paint out of here as I could. And now I'm going to pour some of the medium in here. And we're going to mix. So you want to make sure you mix it thoroughly enough so that you don't see the medium anymore. Um, it doesn't look separated. And uh, you get that honey, buttery, fluid uh, feel to it. And make sure you get the edges and the middle at the bottom of your cups. So you're not missing anything. And make sure um, you leave the big cup for combining all the colors together. So this needs a little bit more medium. It's neat because uh, some of the artists that I was doing some research on, they buy those like um, those plastic uh, containers that you sometimes see at a diner that have the mustard and ketchup. They'll, they'll buy those and then they mix their colors with the medium and they put it in those things. And then, um, I mean, they, they do a lot of pour painting, so it makes sense to do it like that for them. But then they can just pick up those containers and uh, either pour directly with that or they can uh, add their colors to the cup if they're doing a, a dirty pour. So it's kind of, it's pretty nice. 
All right, so that looks better. So I have a uh, black already mixed. I've got my blue here, white, and red. <clears throat> Go ahead and mix all of your colors. Um, we're gonna do something different tonight. We're gonna pour some of the white out onto the canvas and cover the whole surface. Um, you, let's see. you may wanna use a paper towel to spread it out or use your glove and just take that off. Um, if you're right-handed, you can always uh, use your other glove or if you have spare gloves around, that would be helpful. So, um, while you're mixing, uh, go ahead and do that. And then you can prepare the canvas. I'm just gonna use a little bit cause I still wanna have enough weight to use in my pour painting too. And I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out. I got paint on both of my gloves, so I'm just gonna take them both off. All right. Now for this, I want my, um, I'm gonna pour my white in the cup first. That's, that means it's gonna come out last. And if you're still mixing your colors, that's okay. I don't wanna rush anybody. We have plenty of time. All right, so I have my white in here first. That's my first layer. Next, I'm going to pour the blue in. And don't worry if you don't pour it in perfectly. That's okay. It doesn't, um, that's not a big deal. It's not going to ruin anything. So I'm just kind of trying to scrape so I get as much color as possible out of here. You um, might have an easier time because you have smaller cups. I'm just using what was available at the library. Okay, so I've got white and blue now. Uh, now I'm gonna pour my yellow. I'm just scraping again so I can make sure to get as much paint out of here as possible. So I want to use all of it. All right, I already got paint on my hands because I took my gloves off. And then red, I'm gonna use red. I did mix black, but I'm not gonna use it. <clears throat> okay, red is my last one. So that's going into the cup. All right. Okay, so I have all my paint mixed together here in the cup. Well, it's not mixed. I just poured it all one at a time. Um, you have the canvas prepared with white on the surface. And now we're just going to try and pour directly in the middle, but do like a slow circular motion to it. Does anybody need more time mixing before I go ahead and do this? Okay. Yes. Okay. So I have one more cup so I can mix green. 
So maybe I will use my black since I already mixed it. Okay. So I'm mixing um, green together with core medium. I had significantly less green paint than um, the other ones, and I may have poured too much medium. We'll see. It's always best to be um, conservative at first, that way you don't ruin it. All right, yeah, this is this has way too much um, medium. So I think what I'll do is I will mix it with my black paint. So my green's gonna mix in with the black paint. The only thing is that I notice is that the black turns a little bit more gray with the medium. It's not as dark as it was <clears throat> without. All right, I'm gonna add this to my cup now. And we're gonna have plenty of color for these tree rings. I learned from the last class to put a little garbage can right here. <laughs> okay, so this is what my cup looks like now. All layered up there. How is everyone doing? Good. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> I was just wondering, so for with the like white and the medium, should I just cover the entire canvas with that? Yeah, um, if you have enough, pour enough to cover the surface just to get started if you want to save weight for the pour. If you don't care, I'm sorry? So this is just to like make sure it like glow, I mean goes like on the canvas better, right? Yeah, it helps it move better. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, this is different from last time. When we did the flip cup, we didn't put anything on the canvas. Uh, so I thought we would try that this time. If you don't want to, it's not required. You can, you can definitely just pour directly from the cup and save your white. You don't have to prepare your canvas beforehand. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to start pouring. Um, I have never done the tree ring before. So um, you can just pour it directly and the colors will come out, but it helps to give it that slight uh, twist with your wrist and do the tiny circles very slowly. So we're gonna, we're gonna try this and see how it goes. I'm gonna stand up for this.
And I might on it, I may have put too much in my cup for the size of the ca canvas. But that's why we prepared our painting area too. So um, we're gonna have extra paint. So look at my cup looks pretty cool if you can see that. I guess the light's not that great in here. Now, um, I may not have put enough light on my canvas for it to spread out more. So what I'm gonna do is tilt my canvas so it's not gonna be circular anymore from the way I poured it. Uh, so you can either choose to keep it like this um, and let it dry in place, or if you want to cover the whole canvas, just tilt it. And if you do it slowly enough, you can try and preserve um, that circular shape. Mine is now going off the side. I think I had a slight tilt to my canvas before I started pouring. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> you, you should make sure your painting surface is level beforehand. So that's really important. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that before now. So far, I still have a circular, um, A circle still to my pour. I may it may turn more square because I've just been um, tilting it towards the corners of the canvas. So I, I think I'm gonna let that one go off the side of this corner here. Okay. And now this side, which is gonna be a little harder for you to see. So some of the poor artists, the poor painting artists, they have these like the, these grates that they use um, and they set their painting camp, their canvas or their painting ground on that. Um, and then they just let it dry on that. And that makes sense to me. I think it would be a lot easier to get your canvas off of that grate than it would be some other surface. I don't know about you, but mine was looking really cool. It doesn't look like so much like a tree ring anymore because I've been moving it around on my canvas, but the pattern of it looks really cool and I hope yours does too. All right, I have one more corner and I really don't wanna get it all on my hand, so I'm gonna try. All right, ah, without dropping it. Okay. I'd say the mixing is what takes the most time. <laughs> if you are able to and you feel comfortable, um, you can start your video. I would love to see how your pore painting turned out. 
Um, I can, I'll, I'll see if I can move mine closer so you can see mine more closer in detail. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit. And I'm really enjoying this area where it kind of looks like I got some cells. The colors over here look really interesting. All right, let me move the, I'm going to unpin my video. That way I can see everybody. All right. Oh, awesome. <gasps> Look at that. That is so beautiful. That turned out really well. Ooh. Oh, I love that vivid green. That's amazing. It looks really good. Everyone did Thank such you. a great job. <clears throat> yeah, this class, um, I should have said in the beginning, probably may may or may not take up the whole hour. Um, it certainly, it, it looks like it only took us about 35 minutes or so. Um, pouring the paint isn't as hard as like using a paintbrush. Oh, wow, look at that. That is beautiful. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you can all do pretty much the same thing and, and I, it would turn out so differently. It's really cool. So I'd say um, if you're if you want to do more paint pour paintings, uh, the probably the most costly thing would be the pour medium and the paint, depending on how many colors you want to use. Um, canvases like this in the uh, this eight by ten was only four dollars um, for this size here at Walmart. So you could easily get a couple, uh, get some more acrylic paint and pour medium, and just go to town. And then uh, use that list of techniques that I have compiled or do a Google search and you'll find um, some other ones to try and they just look like a lot of fun. So um, you could always go to the dollar store and get like a cheap colander to ruin <laughs> with a poor, poor painting. And then you can do that really cool looking like uh, flower or um, the really neat symmetrical circle with all the different colors in it. You could even try um, the swipe method, which I, I kind of wish we could do that one next. So maybe I will plan that one uh, for the future. But uh, I want to thank everyone so much for joining me. And then uh, let me know if you have any questions. There's going to be a survey that will be emailed out to everyone tomorrow. So feel free to fill that out if you if you don't mind. Feedback gives us um, information for planning uh, events and programs for the future. So just let us know how it went for you and then um, hopefully see you again soon. I have a watercolor painting class next Wednesday um, and the kits are ready to be picked up. So if you're registered, I did send out an email, so let me know if you'd like to come and pick them up. Otherwise, uh, maybe I'll see you on Monday for our Abraham Lincoln presentation. I believe that's at 6.30 or 7 o'clock. Kathy, that looks amazing. And honestly, it's okay if you didn't get circles. I mean, the end result looks amazing. I tried. It's pretty. I like it. Thank you. I, I'm hoping it's going to go well in my uh, sunroom. Ooh, yes. Yes. So. Good uh, choice. I'm, I'm, I see, is, the, is it Manis? Yeah, I'm Priya. Hi, Priya. How yeah, are you? Thank you so much. I oh, did. You're yeah. so welcome. That is so pretty. What do you think of it? Yeah, it's really very pretty. It's thank lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining me tonight. Yeah, thank you for providing me kit and everything. 
Thank you. Oh, so you much. are so welcome. I'm so happy that you were able to join me tonight, and I hope everyone had a great time. I sure did. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Oh, you're so welcome.